So what is the best whiskey glass you can use when drinking whiskey? And I do think this topic can kind of be dismissed too often because I do think some whiskey glasses can absolutely transform and change your experience of drinking whiskey through the smell and taste. So welcome to First Phil, I'm Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in about the best whiskey glass you should buy. So at the end of the day, drinking whiskey is all about personal preference. Because, you know, it just depends what sort of mood you're in. You might be drinking whiskey kind of casually and you don't really want to think about it too much. Or you could be really trying to bring out those kind of tasty notes and analyze the whiskey with detail. So what I've done is I've made some criteria to help guide us to highlight what's good about some whiskey glasses in some environments and what's good about other whiskey glasses in other environments. So the first criteria is aesthetics. And with aesthetics, what I'm looking for is a whiskey that just, you know, feels nice to hold in your hand. It looks like a really nice glass. Cause you know, we're not drinking kind of Sprite out of a, like a plastic cup. You know, we're drinking a really nice spirit. So the second criteria is how easy the whiskey is to drink. You know, with some glasses, you have to put your head all the way back and some glasses you can sip it, keep eye contact. And the third criteria is how well the whiskey glass helps you smell the whiskey. The next one is heat exchange, which is how fast your hands can kind of heat up the glass and then heat up the whiskey. And then there's the practical aspect, which is basically how fragile is the glass or, you know, can you put the glass in the dishwasher or is it just really tedious to wash the glass by hand? And then there's the cost. You know, you want a glass that's good value, especially if you're doing like a whiskey tasting, you don't want to buy sort of 10 glasses that all cost $50 each. So now that we've been through the criteria, I do think we can put all the whiskey glasses onto the appreciation enjoyment spectrum. And I have talked about this before, it's coined by Charles McLean. Basically, there are some glasses that are better made for appreciating the whiskey, kind of analyzing the whiskey, getting the aromas, getting the taste, and kind of just geeking out about the whiskey. And other whiskey glasses are better for enjoying the whiskey. You can drink it all sorts of different ways. You're not thinking about it too seriously. You just want to kick back and, you know, just enjoy it. And then there are a bunch of whiskey glasses that are in between the two, it's a spectrum. So I think the best way to illustrate the different way whiskey glasses work is to start at the extremes. So let's start at the extreme of appreciating a whiskey with a 1920s blender's glass. Better just get a whiskey. So this whiskey was actually sent to me by a patron. Thanks very much, Lauren Stick. You are fantastic. You're a first fill friend. And this is a really nice whiskey. It's actually uh, Daniel Whittington's favorite whiskey apparently. Um, so I think it'd be a really good one to help us find the best whiskey glass. So the first thing you'll probably notice about this glass is it has this massive bulb shape with this narrow little opening at the top. And what that does is it makes it a really great nosing glass. So for a glass that you really want to smell the whiskey, that's what it's really good for. Basically it has this huge area for the whiskey to breathe and it kind of concentrates that all up through this funnel that's really kind of gives you a real powerful explosion of flavor on your nose. Yeah just so turned up but you know some people think that it's almost kind of turned up too much uh, that it can kind of sort of burn your nose with the ethanol um, I think not really I don't really find that but I definitely think you would with a car strength whiskey so I wouldn't recommend using this for a car strength whiskey what I do think it's good for is really old whiskies you know with a lot of kind of subtle flavors and complexities so in terms of looks for the glass I don't actually mind how it looks, I think it looks fine, it's sort of like a wine glass, it's definitely more kind of on the sort of fancy kind of geeky end of things. It's also got this long stem which means heat transfer is not an issue. The one negative though is it is a very fragile glass, you know in terms of practicality I'm definitely not putting this in the dishwasher, uh, it's probably the most fragile of all my glasses. Also in terms of hand washing I'm not even probably going to use a normal brush, I'll probably use like a baby brush to clean it. The other negative is that drinking the whiskey, you have to tilt your head right back. I'll just show you for a demonstration. See, to actually get the whiskey into your mouth, you have to put your head right back. And some people are really passionate about keeping eye contact when you drink whiskey. 
not a huge thing for me, but again, it's it's personal preference. And this one, yeah, you, your head's going right back to drink this. Out of any of my whiskey glasses, the cost of this glass kind of varies the most. And I think that's because it's quite a rare glass, it's a hard glass to find. Um, you know, if you order this from China, kind of in bulk and you wait two months, you could get it quite cheap or you could order it, order it from a retailer who kind of resells them and they can mark up the prices quite a lot. You know, I've seen this from $10 all the way up to $60. It kind of varies a lot. So yeah, cost is, it depends. So now that we've looked at the absolutely extreme end of the appreciation side of the spectrum, let's jump to the other side to illustrate what it looks like for a glass that's great for enjoyment. And the best glass I think that's good for enjoyment is the tumbler. It's the one you'd see in a lot of movies, it's the one you see at most restaurants and bars, and it's probably the glass you're most likely to already own, even if you're not really into whiskey that much. That's because it's a very versatile glass. It has this massive opening at the top, so it's great for dropping ice in, what people call on the rocks, which is also why people call this the rocks glass. And also great for making cocktails in, both of which are terrible for the blender's glass. You know, you're not gonna be dropping ice into this. Also as well, it's great in social situations. You can sip it and keep eye contact. It's really well structured. It's not gonna be knocked over. You can put most tumblers in the dishwasher. The cost is normally quite good because there's so many different types of tumblers that you'll normally find one that fits your budget. And aesthetically, it's good as well because it's really easy to hold in your hand and Again, because there's so many different types of tumblers, it's easy to find a tumbler that you like the look of. Where it falls down though, is that it's not a great nosing glass. Because basically the opening's so wide that basically the aromas kind of go past your nose. Whereas when I compare this to the blender's glass, it's just turned up. It's an orchestra flavor. There's white fruit, red, red fruit. Whereas on this, and a little bit of those lemon notes, but really not much at all. Uh, it's not really great for nosing. And as I was saying before, there are a lot of different versions of the tumbler. So I actually have three versions here. I have this one, which is a nice crystal kind of classic kind of glass with really nice sort of crystal patterns on it. Then the Litton glass. Um, I have talked about this on the channel before. Um, they actually sent me this glass. I really like it because it's got this sort of Grand Canyon in the middle. The thing I don't really like about this glass is it's not really good for muddling. So if you're making an old fashioned and you're trying to um, kind of squash down the sugar, you can't really do that with this. Also, if you've got a big, big ice cube, it can't quite fit. So you need kind of a smaller ice cube, but I really like it. It's definitely one when people come around, it's definitely a conversation starter because it's just such an interesting different glass. And then my last kind of tumbler glass is this one. And this is the tumbler glass that Norlin makes. And this is a fantastic whiskey glass, but full disclosure, I did reach out to them. And so they sent me a free glass. So thank you very much, Norlin. But this is not sponsored by them. And the first thing you notice about this glass is just how heavy it feels in your hand. In terms of aesthetics, this is probably my favorite glass to hold. Uh, for comparison, it's probably about the same weight as this pint glass. <laughs> Actually, I think it's heavier than that pint glass. The base of it has got this really nice design, which also doubles up as a muddling thing, so great for making old fashions, great for cocktails. And then on the other side, it has this really cool compass design. So it's definitely an expensive glass though, but if you were to splash out for a really nice tumbler, it's probably the one I would recommend. So those glasses are definitely on the enjoyment side of the spectrum, but there are some tumblers as well that kind of split the difference. They come a little bit towards the appreciation side. And generally those are the glasses I get in gift packs quite a lot. Um, so for example, this is one I got with a Glen Morangy bottle. Uh, this one I got with a Glenlivet bottle I bought and it came with two free glasses. And you can kind of see what they're doing. They're a tumbler, but they're just narrowing a little bit at the top so you can kind of get a few aromas out of them. So now let's talk about the most famous glass used by whiskey clubs, used by most whiskey YouTube channels and used by my channel. And that is the Glen Karen glass. And this is definitely on the appreciation side of the spectrum because it's a great nosing glass, it has the same idea as the blenders. It has this kind of wide opening where it lets the whiskey breathe and then it funnels it up the top. In terms of comparing it to the blenders though, the blenders is definitely further down that spectrum because 
it has a smaller opening, it's kind of just a more exaggerated version, and it also has a lot of other things going for it. The cost is great, which is why it's often used in whiskey tastings around the world, because you can get it in New Zealand for around $10, so you could easily build your collection up slowly and have a decent amount of Glencairn glasses for a great tasting with your mates. Uh, it has this little foot at the bottom, so heat exchange is not really an issue, and it's also surprisingly durable. I put this in the dishwasher, and it's fine. It, it just works really well. Um, in fact, I've actually dropped this and not smashed it, and if you've watched that video that the Whiskey Tribe did when they looked at glasses, they actually dropped this and it was fine. It's a surprisingly durable glass. Where it kind of gets some criticism is it has the same thing as the blenders. When you drink it, when you sip it, you do have to put your head right back. So that's a personal preference thing. You know, if you don't mind it, that's fine. Some people do mind it. So there's a few other nosing glasses on this side of the spectrum as well that work quite well. Um, one of the more famous ones is the Capita or the kind of wine tasting glass. It's good for a lot of the reasons the Glencairn is, kind of funnels the aromas up. Uh, it also is very affordable, which is why this glass is also used in a lot of whiskey tastings because it's actually normally cheaper than the Glencairn. So if you were to buy, say, 20 glasses for a big whiskey tasting night, you know, this might be the one to go for because it's going to be the best value because there's so many different types of uh, capitas you can buy. Also as well, it has this nice stem so you can hold it, so heat transfer is not an issue. This one specifically is actually quite durable. I put it in the dishwasher and it's fine, but I have had other capitas, you know, ones I've got from wine tastings that have smashed and have broken. So it really depends on what you're getting. It's a bit like the tumbler in that. There's lots of variations of this glass. And some other nosing glasses. This one here I got in the Laphroaig pack. Um, it's basically like the Glencairn, but without the foot. So yeah, it's quite nice. I like it. Um, heat transfer might be an issue. This one here is quite cool. Aesthetically, it's quite nice to hold. It's a bit like holding a tumbler, but it, you can add the nose and the aromas to it. And it feels quite nice to hold, you know? It feels like the sort of one you'd swirl around and, uh, you know, smoke a pipe with. But I do need to talk about this glass, which has had quite a lot of hype recently, and that is the Norlin glass. So full disclosure, they did send me this glass as well, but if I put it here in the middle, you can kind of see that it's trying to do both ends of the spectrum. It's trying to be a great glass that you can hold, it feels nice to hold, aesthetically it looks really nice, like these ones do. The way they've built this glass means that you can sip it and keep eye contact with the sort of narrow bit in the middle. It also is a glass you can nose quite well. Um, in terms of nosing though, I wouldn't say it is as good as this side of the spectrum. It's definitely better than this side of the spectrum, but it is in the center. Um, if I just nose the Glencairn. Yeah, I don't, this gives you a more concentrated aroma, but if you get a lot of ethanol burn on the nose, maybe this is one that would work better for you. What this glass is really well known for is the heat transfer side. It has this double walled glass design, so there's no way your hands can kind of heat up the whiskey that's in there. For me, I'm not really convinced that that's super important in whiskey. I just don't feel like glass is a good conductor. What I do use this glass for though, is it kind of doubles up as my coffee glass because I can put really hot coffee in here and it won't kind of burn my fingers. So that's kind of sort of a little bonus for it. But in terms of whiskey, I'm not super fussed. Also as well, it feels quite fragile. It's not one I put in the dishwasher. In fact, Norlin don't recommend you put it in the dishwasher too. The other negative is the cost is quite high. If I was to do a whiskey tasting, I'm probably not gonna buy five of these. I'll definitely be buying these ones. So there are other glasses I haven't mentioned in this video. Obviously there's a shot glass, but I feel like if you're watching a video on YouTube about what the best whiskey glass is, you don't really want to be recommended the shot glass. You know, it, it's practical though. It's great for getting drunk, but it's not really good for appreciating a whiskey and for enjoying a whiskey. But there are some glasses I do want to mention. And one is this one here, which I got when I was in Vietnam. It's called the Son 
Tin, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. This is not sponsored by them, actually I have the opposite problem. I can't actually figure out where I can buy more of these, but I really, really like this glass. It's used in Vietnam for a local kind of rice spirit. It's my favorite glass to take traveling because it's super durable. You can wrap this up in your suitcase really easily. I've dropped it several times. Um, it's got a really nice heavy base. It's great for drinking casually, but it also I can nose it too. I actually took this glass when I did a great walk in New Zealand when I went up the Kepler track. So I was drinking this on the top of a mountain with a little bit of Ardbeg I took with me. I don't know, it's a shame I can't find any more of it. Maybe it's discontinued, not sure, but I definitely do like it. So now that we've been through the whole spectrum of glasses, you can now see it's not an easy answer to the question about which glass is best. It comes down to the principle you're drinking whiskey for. What's your personal preference? Are you wanting to add ice and use it in cocktails? Or are you wanting to go deep on the whiskey, appreciate it and analyze it? Or are you sort of somewhere in between? Thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. Absolutely appreciate you guys, especially Laurent for um, sending me this bottle. That's very generous of you. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy beauty.